and I'm retiring this boy. You've been good to me. In the trash. Hi and welcome back to my channel. This is Skylark Beauty and my name is Mick. Tonight I wanted to do a what's in my makeup bag currently that I've been really loving and using, kind of going over my go-to routine. I find that a lot of times whatever is in your makeup bag or whatever is in your purse or whatever you keep your lip things in, you tend to gravitate towards those select products until you actually take the time and the effort to take those things out and replace them with new things. So I wanted to just go over the little rut that I've been in with my makeup bag and then maybe switch them out with some other products and get some more use out of other products in my arsenal. Also, the star of tonight's show is the new LA Girl the nudist eyeshadow palette. I got it from Ulta and I can't remember the exact price but it was very reasonable. I will insert swatches now. As you can see from these shades without the flash there is a great color combination and color story going on here with a white and a black. The white is off white but it is matte nonetheless. You have a nice camel shade in there, a nice matte peach color shade, and then you have some satins and metallics as well. Very versatile. So as you can see from this flash picture, you can tell which ones are matte and which ones are satin and metallic. I even like the duochrome brown, which I usually don't like because it shifts to greenish blue and I really don't usually like that. I like that the mattes are white and black right on the top left and the bottom right, which can deepen and lighten colors without making them shiny in any way. And then there are a bunch of nice matte transition colors as well in there. What the shades look like, they're beautiful. Some are satin, some are matte, and some are mm, a little foiled. The quality of the shadows is just incredible. So hopefully in the little tutorial that I do on here, you'll be able to see the pigmentation and how smooth and buttery these shadows actually are. Well, I've been starting out with my e.l.f. Hydrating Coconut Mist, which you would have seen in my last video as one of my current most used products. I'm almost out, actually. I spray a little of this on my face to get my face ready for whatever I'm going to put on it, covering my microphone. It's really easy to run through this stuff like water because A, it spritzes out a very generous amount, and B, you only get 2.7 fluid ounces, and I'm used to getting much more from my other sprays. Maybe I'll start using my all-nighter. Everybody talks about it, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm not quite there yet. So after I put that on and I let it dry pretty quickly, oh, I'm not liking this at all. This is going to sound really stupid, but I actually had to turn my light on, so excuse my busted blinds that my bird has chewed and my bedding behind me, but I could not film with the lights off just now because I just remembered that I watched the movie The Nun last night with my boyfriend, and he thought it was stupid and comical and not good, but it still scared me nonetheless, and there were still images that like are stuck in my head that were scary, and... <laughs> So much of it played off of like jumping out at you, coming from behind stuff, and just seeing that pitch black behind me. I just felt like something was like sneaking up behind me, watching me, and then all of a sudden a face was going to appear behind me in the dark. It's just an irrational fear I've always had since I was little. So anyway, moving on. So I sprayed myself with the coconut hydrating mist. I feel like I'm not the only one that gets freaked out about that kind of stuff, right? Like I'm not alone. I'm not like a little kid, right? Like I'm not afraid of the dark. I'm just afraid of what could be in the dark, so to speak. So the next step that I've been doing is putting on a little bit of my Glossier Priming Moisturizer, just a tiny bit, all over my face. And this just gives a little bit of added moisture. I'll have to film during the day next time. But I just really got the urge to film tonight when I was watching those shadows. The key to my go-to look these days is the LA Girl Luminous Glow. It's a skin illuminator, and this stuff, if anything, can make you look metallic. This stuff is it. You get an ounce of product, which is a lot. I'm really mad that I haven't used it before now, because I got it this last month. It smells a little 
perfumey, which I actually like. And it's such a pretty champagne color. The one that I'm using is in Glow. They also have a pearl color that's very like white and pearly. And then they have a more bronze color, and I don't know what that one's called, but I'm assuming it's bronze or something like that. But look at this. So metallic and pretty. It just gives you a very natural, glowy, dewy finish. And then after that, I like to go in with, I've been using my Kiko Smart Hydrating Foundation that I got in Italy. You can get it on Kiko.com. It's very watery. So just to give you an idea, I could go like that. I could go like that. Like that. And it's full coverage. You don't need a lot of product. And then I've been using my It From Ulta Slanted Kabuki Flawless Airbrush to buff out my foundation. Nice and light. That was my boyfriend sneezing. He sneezes so loudly. It scares me every time I jump. It melts right in very nicely over the illuminator. I hope he's not getting sick. This is actually one of the only foundations I have that pulls very yellow, even more yellow than my actual skin tone, which is pretty unusual. So everyone should be familiar with this if you've watched a few of my videos. The NYX Bright Idea Illuminating Stick. I don't know why they call it that because this is not illuminating. But this is in the shade Topaz Tan. And I just buff it out with my Eco Tools Wonder Complexion brush. I'm just going to go up here and add two little swipes to contour my cheekbones. I really prefer cream contouring for some reason. I feel like you have more control with the color and it looks more, it looks more natural than depositing powder over your skin. I like bronzer. I'm, I'm getting into bronzer now. Don't get me wrong. My, but cream contouring has definitely always been more comfortable for me than powder contouring. I just feel like it melds into your skin. And also, also if it's a little, also if it's a little too severe, you can always cover it up with some powder later on. Whereas when you put powder on powder contour. It's kind of, if you put it on too severely or something like that, it's kind of hard to fix because you've already set your face most likely with powder. I'm going to go in with the ColourPop Light 10, their concealer. That's what I've been using. I'm going to take it down the nose a little bit and then boop. I do a little cross on my chin and I do under my eyes like this, and then a tiny little stripe under my contour. Oh, clean brushes work so much better than dirty ones. I keep forgetting that. A nice, clean, fluffy concealer brush. That's another reason why this kind of video is helpful, because it reminds you to replace your things with clean things and other things from your vanity. So it's good to sit down at your vanity every once in a while. I don't know about you guys, but I get ready on the fly, on the go, and I don't usually sit at my vanity to get ready. I sit on my bed and listen to music or watch video, watch get readies with me and stuff like that. So I actually don't do the formal vanity get up most days. I don't know if anybody else does that, but it's more homey. It feels less cold and sterile. And I also, I'm not the biggest fan of my vanity right now. So it's not really somewhere I go to do a comfortable makeup look. It's really not much to see. That's why I haven't done a look at my vanity tour or anything like that because it's pretty, pretty embarrassing at the moment. As you can see, I cleaned up my nose and now I'm going to set everything with powder. Mixture of RCMA No Color Powder and Cody Airspun. I really need to switch this out, but I've been trying to make a dent in those two things and you know what I have been. I really want to do a project pan and so I haven't done a formal announcement of one listing the products and I'm going to try to hit pan on, but hey, if I do hit pan on products, I'll probably just tell you. I don't need to announce ahead of time. I can just show you like, oh, hey, look, look what I've gone through, you know? I don't know if I necessarily need to do a hold me accountable video 
because I know for a fact I'll be doing my makeup every day. That's for damn sure. That doesn't change. So something's going to get used up, you know what I mean? All right, so this powder is good, and it also lightens up any darkness, kind of brightens everything up because of the Cody Airspun in the shade Translucent, which is not translucent. It actually has some coverage on it. It's interesting because the packaging says translucent, but then it says light coverage or something like that, and so I don't know. It's interesting to me. And the bronzer that I have been using is ColourPop Spectacle Pressed Powder Bronzer. This is Spectacle, so it looks really dark, and but it's like the perfect neutral tone, not too cool, not too warm, to give you that realistic glowing, I might have gotten some sun like a healthy normal person look that I definitely want to go for since I don't get sun that often. Okay, so here we go. Look at that. That Let me block that. Look at that nice glow. I think between the cream contour and this <sighs> spectacle powder, it really creates nice definition on the face as well as a pretty healthy look. It really chisels down those features. So then I go in with blush, and the, what I've been doing is taking between the sheets, which is a super shock cheek shadow, and it looks like this. It's a nice spicy mauve color. I've just been grabbing a little and rubbing it on the apples of my cheeks. And yes, this is after I have powdered it. It works fine over powder. You just don't press hard and don't drag. And it, it comes out and converts into a nice little powder. It's cream to powder. After just depositing a little bit of that, a faint little flush to the face. Um, I will go in with my Always Cheeky blush from e.l.f., which is their primer infused blush. My BH Cosmetics V3 brush. It's an angled, it's an angled blush brush, and I really like it. It's nice and fine natural hair no i think it's synthetic but it's but it's nice and fluffy and then i take a little bit of the just cheeky i really like this color and i've really been digging hard in this blush so it wouldn't surprise me if i hit pan on it relatively soon and i just got it maybe like a month ago maybe two months ago <sighs> so then i do that oh wow Okay. That was the first time I've used brow pomade in a really long time, and I forgot that it definitely is a learning curve type product, and I have to get comfortable with it again. This little guy, it is well loved, almost done. My boyfriend is watching The Punisher, and it is so loud. Or not The Punisher, it's one of those Marvel things. So loud. It gives me anxiety. I have no idea what's going on, but it sounds really violent, and I don't really like violence. I could barely, like, deal with the violence that was in that horror movie last night. Okay, we're not talking about that horror movie. We just aren't. We're not. Whew, okay. So, on to the star of the show. The LA Girl Nudist Palette comes in a nice sleeve like that. It comes with a very generous size mirror and these colors. So... You could stick to the warmer ones or the dark or mix it all in, but I use them for a warmer look and I think I'm gonna go in with a more smoky look tonight since it is nighttime for me here. Now the brushes I've been using for my eyes have been comprised mostly of Morphe. Actually, that's not true. So I go in first with my favorite. This is a Farah, Farah brush. It's beautiful. I bought three more. I've been using that to kind of just set my eyes with some cream color. So I'm starting with the cream shade right there. Now I'm going to go in with a little bit of that peach shade as well. Just a little bit to darken up that brightness on that brow bone. Then I'm to take my Morphe 433. I'm going to go in with this kind of camel shade right here. It's kind of like a camel sable shade. And I'm just going to place that as my transition shade. I wish they had more of a light gray in here. But I get that this is a nude palette, so they wanted to keep it more skin in realm. 
but there is a black in here. And as you could see from the swatches, there's a pretty pigmented black and a pigmented duochrome green brown. For the most part, I don't like duochromes and I also just don't like brown and blue mixed together. I think that that's a weird combination. I just set up my transition shade because we're probably going to do a cut crease of sorts. I'm going to go in with my fluffy crease brush, which is from Morphe, the M441. I'm going to go in on that duochrome shade right there that pulls blue. I'm not sure how it's going to show up on camera, but I'm just going to go and put this on the outer V and bring it in. I really, really like this palette. And I won't, this is only my second time using it and I can tell that I'm gonna really get some use out of it. And that I really like it. I'm really impressed with LA Girl. I told you that my favorite drugstore blush is made by them. All right, so I smoked out the outside of my eye here. Now I'm gonna go back in with that big, fat, fluffy Farrah brush with a little bit of that peach shade that I laid down earlier. Buff out any rough edges that I could have. Seamless there. I'm going to go in with this tiny, tiny Real Techniques detail brush this tiniest 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 little brush and I'm going to go in with some concealer to cut my crease and I'm going to use the white concealer from ColourPop and I'm just gonna dot it on like that and take it about two-thirds out and Oh, God, I think I have an eyelash in my eye. And I'm starting to put the cut crease up a little higher where to cut the crease or how to do it because I don't have any, any guidelines for my eyelids. But I think that's how I'm going to cut it tonight. Okay, so we cut the crease. Let me deepen up the outer corner again because some of it always gets wiped off or dulled down. Still want the outer corner to be quite smoky. I'm gonna go in, back in with my little fluffy crease brush from Morphe. And this time only bring my brush in halfway, not as far as I did over here, because I don't wanna mess with the cut crease that I did. So the color that I think I wanna go in with is this really pretty, taupe shiny color now it's a lot darker in real life maybe if i hold it like this yeah that color right there there is a lot of kickback from this but it doesn't bug me it is nice don't get me wrong it's not as vibrant as i would have liked let me just go in with my finger and see if i can brighten that up or if maybe I just picked too dark of a color. It's not that metallic of a shadow. There we go. Okay, so in on the inner corner with a more light champagne shade. In with some eyeliner. The eyeliner that I have been using is Maybelline Master Precise All Day Liquid Liner. My favorite. Creates a nice way. I think this one might be dying on me here. And I'm going to replace this liner with the booster liner from Physicians Formula that I got in my last haul. I'm so excited to use that. So excited, you have no idea. Because supposedly it has some kind of ingredients in it and nutrients that help and aid with the lash growth, which is what I absolutely need because my lashes are so short and spiky. Any friend of mine knows that's all I bitch about is how short and spiky my lashes. I mean, it's not, that's not the only thing I bitch about. I have life problems bigger than that, but don't we all? Yeah, this little guy's about to kick the bucket. I'm pressing down pretty hard. You did good, little buddy. You did good. So there are my wings, and I'm retiring this boy. 
you've been good to me in the trash so this little Ciate wonder wand mascara I got in my ipsy bag looks like this don't be fooled by its short wand it really plumps up the lashes volumizes them it has the perfect not too wet not too dry formula all right so there's the eyelashes and lip 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 the old school girl lactic and demure this is one of my favorites and it smells like vanilla if i remember yes it does and it's super moussey so if you do get it be careful because it's moussey and i have lip balm on right now that i'm putting this over so i always put liquid lips on over lip balm smells so good do you remember those little toys they're like muffin ladies or something it smells like those like blueberry muffin I have to put up a picture I think they're real I don't think I made them up but it smells like them like they smelled like muffins or something I'm not crazy I'm not I mean I am but not because of this I have to find a picture and put it up there so that you know what I'm talking about but it smells just like them if you grew up in the 90s you will know what I mean and you'll get this because it smells like them because they smell delicious let's finish this elf off this coconut hydrating mist cover my mic oh hey i might have another usage out of it that is the final look thank you for watching please like and subscribe i would love it if you're part of the flock ring my bell so that you can know when i upload my next videos and i will see you in my next video thanks guys Bye.